Oh, that highlight, baby. It's the highlight for me. It's the wing for me, child. It's the paste. Hey angels and welcome back to Shorty Creations. If you guys are new to my channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're not new to my channel then, <laughs> you already know the vibes, bitch. Welcome to another Vlogmas video. I genuinely hope you guys are enjoying my Vlogmas series. And I just thought because we haven't had a girls chat in quite a while on Shorty Creations, it only made sense to have a girls chat part of this Vlogmas series before the end of 2021. So I asked you guys on my Instagram to send me a few questions and topics that you guys would love me to talk about in this girls chat and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. We are gonna be open, honest, and we are going to have candid conversations, okay? It's about to get real. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. The first one says relationship red flags. I don't know, I feel like this is very subject to you as a person, but for me personally, it's someone who thinks money can buy love. Like that is the biggest red flag. When I see it in other people's relationship, I'm just like, whoa. Because yeah, the trips are cool, the money's nice, the gifts are nice, but at the end of the day, you're in a relationship with a person. You're not in a relationship with that broken bag. You're not in a relationship with that makeup or that trip that he took you on, you know? So I hate people who just throw money at everything, you know, so that's not for me. Praying with your partner, is it important at our age or is it only necessary in marriage? I don't think praying with your partner has anything to do at what stage of the relationship that you're at. If you're someone who's very religious, very spiritual, and it's a big part of your relationships in general and a big part of your life, then I think it's important. Like if it's important to you, it should be important in your relationship, no matter what stage of the relationship it is. You know what I mean? Someone's asking birth control. Are you on birth control and how is it treating you? So I'm gonna be open and honest with you guys about my experience and my journey with birth control. And just to put this out there before I even start with my story, just because I had the experiences that I had doesn't necessarily mean you will have those experiences. It's really subject to each person. So yeah, just to put that out there. At the beginning of 2019, I started using a birth control called Trifacil or Trifazil or however you pronounce it. I started using that birth control, right? And everything was perfect for me. Like I didn't have any side effects. My period was normal. I didn't have a breakout. My skin was fine. Like everything was normal for me. I didn't feel any difference once I started using that pill. And yeah, it was literally perfect for me. And then at the beginning of this year, I started seeing another gynae. And this gynae suggested that I use Yaz cause it's like this new birth control on the market and wada wada wada. And I wasn't really open to it cause I had heard a lot of stories about Yaz. But also I know that everyone's experience is different with different birth controls. So I was like, Reluctant, but I was like, okay, cool. So I switched to Yaz, right? Within the first two months of me using Yaz, I started developing these red stretch marks on my boobs. And I'm sure you guys have seen it on my Instagram posts, on my YouTube videos, and I haven't really spoken about them because it's something that I'm very self-conscious about, something I'm so insecure about. Like, guys, I can't even explain how I feel about them and how they make me feel um but yeah i trust you guys i feel really safe around you guys like my youtube family i feel so safe with you guys so i'm gonna be open and share like how i've been feeling within two months of using it as i started developing these stretch marks but when they started coming it was like they started coming in very slowly you know and at the time i didn't link the stretch marks with the pulse okay fine about six months into using Yaz or like five six months my period started to become weird it was almost like my period was not flowing it was like something was blocking it like it wasn't flowing as it was even when I was using Trifasol so I'd still get my period but the color would be weird it wasn't flowing like it just didn't feel good so my gynae changed me from Yaz to Yaz plus 
started using Yaz Plus, like my stretch marks just went like i can't even explain to you guys the pain that i was going through because it was like in the middle of my chest i literally could not go five minutes without wearing a bra if i don't wear a bra for five minutes i start developing a new one like i could not not wear a bra every time i went to gym i had to layer layer bras i remember there was a time i was wearing two bras to gym went to gym i was doing a lot of cardio so like i was skipping and running and stuff so it was a lot of like bouncing motions and then i got back and it was as if my skin had tore in the middle like the pain that i was in guys i can't even explain anyway so that's what was happening and now i'm obviously tracing back like when did these stretch marks even start i've passed my puberty phase like what's going on so i trace back and i'm like these started once i started using these birth control poles i go back to my old gynae i tell him what's going on i'm like i'm stressed and he even was like they're bad so then i went to go see a dermatologist and now i'm back on trifosol um it's only been a month since i've been back on trifosol so i'm just trying to build back my skin well the skin tissue on my breasts because obviously the skin was really thin i was just like you know what let me give it a few months i'm back on trifosol and i'm happy but yeah that's been my experience with birth control um what can i say do you experience period pains like some people don't and i'm just like damn must be nice i don't really experience period pains if i do it's probably in winter but hardly losing friends yo guys we're all going through it with friends eh and shaking them our friendship honestly guys it's okay to lose friends like this year really taught me that everything happens for a reason and once you shed off those friends that needed to be shed off like you just find a new part of yourself we hold on to this idea that we need to be like the squad of like five people six people guys you know what you really find the truest forms of friendships in that one friend in those two friends but this thing of having big group of friends i am fine okay we have a little bit of a scenario i want to lose my v card to this guy that i like but i'm very scared any advice you'd give me honestly if you're not ready you're not ready hey and i feel like losing your v card is scary like there'll never be a point where you're not scared to lose it like it's a big deal you know but i think you must have a conversation with this guy like speak to him tell him how you're feeling like sometimes being with someone who makes you comfortable and that understands it's your first time and understands how to really handle you and treat you well you know you need to have these conversations have those open sexual conversations someone's like the fastest way to get over a boy if you want to get over someone get under someone else even someone has asked me to talk about heartbreak guys what is it to say about heartbreak it's so painful yo guys it literally feels like someone is stabbing your actual heart like you feel physical pain like your chest is in pain how important it is for females to be involved in political slash political discussions a lot of females are part of political and political discussions like women are at the forefront of activism at the forefront of inciting change and i think the women who aren't part of political discussions like i don't like talking about politics because i get emotionally invested and also to be able to speak on politics you need to have the necessary information you can't just go there and be like well i feel come with the facts and there are people who are passionate about that if you're not passionate about that it's also okay like we don't all have to be politicians i'm someone who prefers not to because when i debate child i debate how do i set boundaries with my close friends it's really been hard for me if those people are your close friends that means you obviously care about them and they should care about you as well you just need to sit and have a conversation with them and sometimes a conversation doesn't even have to be spicy it doesn't have to get spicy and now there's fights and whatever like literally just sit them down and be like you know friend when you say one two and three it makes me feel this way you know i always say that 
one conversation can go a long way and it can clear up so much that you didn't even know needed to be spoken about. Is being in a relationship in high school worth it if the energy is not reciprocated? Being in a relationship at any stage of your life is not worth it if the energy is not reciprocated. No, baby girl. Mm -mm. Whether you're in varsity, whether you're working high in high school, if the energy is not being reciprocated, no relationship is worth it, really. Balancing school with side hustles, basically time management. You know what I've realized this year? Like with my YouTube and my school and wanting to work and, 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 is that everything in life requires a sacrifice. You wanna grind, you wanna hustle, you wanna put more time into your craft, that means you're taking away time from something else, you know, and something else has to go. And you have to be willing to sacrifice a few things to achieve other things. So there's definitely something that you're going to have to sacrifice. If that means spending less time out, spending less time going to groove, less time with your friends, if that's what it means, then you have to be willing to make that sacrifice for your dreams and your hustle and everything that you want to do on the side. So at the end of the day, like you have to decide what is your priority at this point in your life. It doesn't necessarily mean like you're never gonna go out, but you just have to decide what's your priority right now. Stick with it because I always say this to myself, okay? Work now so that I can enjoy later. I see so many people are saying, fake friends, toxic friendships, how to leave a toxic friendship, and all of that. Like, if you know that you in a toxic friendship and you know that your friends are being fake, why are you still friends with them? Like, I don't understand. Guys, we grow, like, I don't understand why we must still sit with these people who will say things behind our backs, but we must he 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 face to face. No, why are you still in that friendship? Yeah, you can love that friend and whatever, but like you can't tolerate disrespect at the end of the day now you have this person who's stressing you out for what if you want to save the friendship and you want to get to the bottom of everything have a conversation hash everything out put everything on the table but if like it's a continuous thing you've spoken about it and it just continues continues just cut it off no explanation needed dating a guy that's sexually active when you're not ready mm -mm. Don't feel pressure. Like, don't feel pressured into doing anything that you don't wanna do. Because the fact that you guys are dating, that means he's known you, you guys were speaking, you guys were vibing, he asked you to be his girlfriend. He already knew that you weren't sexually active and that you weren't ready to engage in those things. So he must wait because if you're not ready, you're not ready. He knew what he was getting himself into from the beginning. So no, don't feel pressure to do anything that you don't want to do or to rush your process if you're not ready maggie sis you're not ready and he needs to respect that is cheating a deal breaker without a doubt i'm so sorry like i don't play games yeah when do you think is the right time to start looking for a job it really depends on the industry that you're in like obviously entertainment industry it's about connections it's about the work that you've done it's about who you know you know so I would definitely suggest that you start early, not necessarily looking for a job, but making those connections, which would make it easier for you to find a job. But um, like your honors year, like start looking for a job in like third year and you definitely have to be working in your honors year. Like that's without a doubt. The power of positivity. So I believe in the law of attraction and the law of attraction says that if one thinks positive or negative thoughts then it'll bring positive or negative experiences into your life and if you radiate positive vibrations you can only match with other positive vibrations navigating joburg as a woman and in the industry how to network at the right place slash the right time i'm even still trying to navigate through joburg as a woman and in the industry but every time i go out I ask myself, what is my reason for going out? Am I going out to have fun? If I'm going out to have fun, I'm going out to have fun. Am I going out to network? Am I going out to work? Do I need to shoot content? Like, why am I going out? If someone invites me out and they'd be like, oh, let's go, where, where, where? I ask myself, why do I wanna go? Am I going just to have fun? 
cool let's go and just have fun am i going because i know so so and so is gonna be there and that's my perfect opportunity to network then that's why i'm going so when you think of the industry that you want to go in and where to network you need to think of the people that you look up to in that industry where do they hang out which events do they go to what do they do at those events and those are the events that you're supposed to be going to if you're someone who's looking to network you need to consider those things who are the people that i look up to where do they hang out what are the events that they go to not just where they go for their social time because i'm sure most celebrities or influencers don't really like being approached at the club so that would be my advice all right angels so to kind of sum up this whole video and end it off i just wanted to give my little two cents maybe a little five cents about everything that you guys send me on instagram and all the topics you wanted me to talk about and the questions that you had one thing that i absolutely love about the questions that you guys sent through and everything that you guys were saying is that everyone is looking to elevate themselves and better themselves whether it be self-esteem confidence in your career you guys are making boss moves you guys are trying to get that type of... i love this for us guys i love this for us i'm not the one to give motivational talks about confidence and self-esteem and really give you like the information that you want in terms of networking and all of that in your career but the best advice that i could give to everyone is that when you know what you want and you know where you're going you know where you want to be it makes all your decisions on the journey so much easier like the decisions about the people you surround yourself with where you decide to go out the decisions that you make like all of those decisions that you make are really guided and they're driven by something you know and when you're driven by something go hard for it you go hard for it you know what i mean and i want y'all to go hard for what you're working towards because the decisions that you make now will affect the future you and like i said i want future me to thank me for the decisions that i made today i see we all going through it there by friendship <laughs> i don't even know what to say child first and foremost before anyone else you are your own best friend and you always need to act in the interest of your own well-being of your own heart because guys if i'm being honest you came in this world alone you look at money alone and you're gonna leave this world alone and i'm not saying that you mustn't value your friendship so you mustn't cherish them but you can't be in a toxic friendship and scared to leave like you have to be strong enough to be like no like and this goes for relationships as well you need to be strong enough to be like you know what i deserve better and deserving better doesn't necessarily mean you pack your shit and leave but i find that with everything that i've read everyone's scared to set those boundaries with their friends i mean what's the point of having this relation with someone and this deep bonded connection if you can't even be honest with them about how you feel as my big mama once said you would rather be alone for the rest of your life than five minutes with bad company and that's on period with that being said we have reached the end of this video i genuinely hope you guys enjoyed this girl's chat if you did please don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up subscribe to my channel and share this video if you can until tomorrow my angels i love you so so much thank you so much for tuning in and i will see you in the next one bye guys Myself, that's all I got in the end. That's what I found out. And it ain't no need to cry. I took a vow that from now on I'm gonna be my own best friend. Be myself.